Considering my track record with TBRs, who wants to guess that 2022 is going to end with 12 completely different books? <laughs> Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through the 12 books that I am intending to read for the Buzzwordathon thon for 2022. This is run by Kayla from Books with Lala and it is the second year that she has done it in this format, but I've never actually taken part in the Buzzwordathon thon before. You get 12 prompts with words in the title or situations in the title and you have to read a book that's focused around that. But there's two ways that you can actually read these books. You can either take the first week of every month and just read books that have those words in the title, or you can take every word and read one book every month that has got that in the title. And that is exactly how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take it as a year long readathon and try and fit in a book for every single month of the year. For January, you have got the five W's and how. So you've got where, what, when, why, who, and how. One of those words needs to feature in the title. So for this one, I'm going to go with a non-fiction book called What Would the Spice Girls Do by Lauren Bravo. This book kind of takes a look at the fun and feisty feminism that the Spice Girls stood for and that they introduced to so many people in the late 90s, early noughties and takes a look at whether or not this is still relevant for the world that we're living in today. Do people still associate themselves with that form of feminism and just how much of an impact have the Spice Girls had on young girls? I was about four or five years old when the Spice Girls first came on the scene. So this is absolutely the kind of book that I'm going to be looking for. I'm also trying to have a look at books that have to do with some of the values and some of the traditions that I am interested in and just generally expanding my knowledge. So this is definitely one that's going to do that. For February, you need to read a book that has a personal or possessive pronoun in the title. So you're looking at me, you, his, her, he, him, my, etc. So for this, I'm going with What I Like About Me by Jenna Guillaume. It actually has two in the title, so that's definitely taking this one off. Jenna Guillaume is an author from Australia. She writes quite a lot of YA fiction, but she's also a journalist who has worked for BuzzFeed in the past, for example. And this copy was very kindly sent to me by Paige from Pages with Paige for my birthday back in June. I don't know a whole lot about this book. I just know that it has a very fat positive main character here. And to be honest, I'm going to go into this one pretty much blind because one of the prompts for the Pop Sugar Challenge for 2022 is to read a book that you know nothing about. And I think that this one might fit in that perfectly. For March, you need to read a book that has a location in the title. So it could be a city, a country, but it could actually be also a place that you can go to, like town, beach, city, country, for example. I'm going to tie it in with one of my favourite other readathons, the Irish readathon, which is run by Elaine from Elaine Howland, Leanne from Leanne Rose, and Aoife from Words of Clover. And I'm going to read Ashling in the City by Sarah Breen and Emer Midlicet. This is the fourth book in the Ashling series, and it's the penultimate one. I think they've just started working on the fifth one. And it follows Ashling, who is completely upheaving her life and moving to New York for a brand new start, a brand new job. I've also just recently moved to a brand new city for a brand new job. So I have a feeling that that is something that's going to connect me to Ashling super well. And I always find a little bit of myself every time I reread the Ashling books. So I am definitely hoping to find myself in here. For April, you need to read a book with a size adjective in the title. So you're looking for great, big, small, little, large, anything along those lines. So for that, I am going with Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is gonna be the second of Celeste Ng's books that I've read. I've actually already read everything I've never told you and utterly loved it. So I am really excited for this one. This takes place in Shaker Heights, a small community just outside Cleveland in Ohio. And everything in this town is really meticulously planned out. Everybody's lawns are the same height. Everybody's houses is exactly the same color. But a young mother and her daughter moved to the town and kind of set everything in motion. There's a family called the Robinsons who absolutely become enamored by this new mother and daughter couple and kind of things spiral out of control from there. One of the lines that actually really caught me in the blurb was everyone in Shaker Heights was talking about it that summer, how Isabel, the last of the Richardson children, had finally gone around the bend and burned the house down. I'm so intrigued by what's going to happen in this. For May, you need a book that has a direction in the title. So North, South, East, West obviously count, but also anything like up, down, left, right, you're also looking for. For this one, I'm going to go with The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. Alicia Rye is one of my favourite authors that I've never read yet. 
I absolutely adore her on TikTok. She is phenomenally funny on there. So if her books are anything like her TikTok presence, then I am absolutely in for a treat. Plus, I've also heard that these are a little bit spicy romances. So I'm very excited for this one. The Right Swipe is the first book in the modern dating series and it follows Rhiannon who has created a dating app. And she has quite a couple of rules for dating, but those all went out the window when she hooked up with Samson, who is a sports star. And then he ghosted her, which is all fine. Except that a couple of months later, they bump into each other at a kind of a dating forum, kind of in-person dating forum. It turns out that Samson is working with a business rival of Rhiannon's and he is adamant that he wants a second chance with her, but she is becoming a lot more guarded since everything that has gone down and especially because he has ghosted her for the last couple of months. I have a little bit of a concern with second chance romance. They aren't always my thing, but I am definitely going to give this one a go. For June, which is my birth month, you are given a word that has to feature in the title and that word is all. So I went with All Adults Here by Emma Straub. This book follows Astrid Strick, who is 68. She's a widow and she's living in upstate New York. She witnesses an accident and decides that this is the moment she's going to right some wrongs that have gone on in her life, starting with repairing the relationship that she has with her three adult children. However, her kids also have got their own things going on in their lives. And it doesn't particularly seem like they are ready for their mother to start treating them like adults just yet. In July, we are going to be reading a book with bookish words in the title. So I have gone for Dear Reader by Kathy Rensenbrick. This was very kindly gifted to me for my birthday by Charlotte from Coiny Reads. I am obsessed with the cover, first of all, but I'm also completely in love with the idea of this book. Kathy Rensenbrick is a big reader and she put this book together to kind of celebrate the joy of reading how much value books bring to our lives, giving other people the chance to discover your favourite book. Maybe it might be their favourite book. I know so many people around booktube who have absolutely praised this book to the skies and I cannot wait to see if I'm going to be one of them as well. For August, you need to read a book that has an item or an object in the title. So for this, I have gone for The House Swap by Olivia Byrne. I've read some of Olivia's books before and I've loved what I've read so far. So I'm really excited to see how her new book goes. This book follows twins Rachel and Katie who don't really know as much as they should about each other's lives anymore. Rachel thinks that Katie is living the high life as an executive in London while Katie thinks that Rachel is living marriage bliss back at home. They decide to swap lives for a couple of weeks and discover that the grass is not always greener for their sister and that things might not be what they appear. Okay, bear with me because September is a little bit of a tenuous one for me. For September, you need to read either light or dark in the title. And for this one, I have gone for Evening Class by Maeve Binchy. My thought process here was, when does it turn from lightness to darkness? In the evening. I don't know if that's going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. In this, you follow the teacher and some students of an Italian language class in Mount View School in Dublin. And you're also finding out what's happening in their lives behind the scenes, how much the teacher wants this class to succeed, not just for him, but for the students themselves. And also a woman who comes from Italy back to Ireland and how much of an impact she has had on the class itself. For October, you need a book that has a creature or an animal in the title. And for this, I have gone with Call of the Penguins by Hazel Pryor. You're following here Veronica, who has lived alone for quite a lot of her life, but has just recently discovered an affinity, not just for wildlife, but specifically for penguins. She is called upon to take part in a wildlife documentary that takes her all the way from her tiny little home in a village in Scotland, right down to the Antarctic, and it is sounding like such a wholesome little book considering how much Veronica loves penguins. I cannot wait to see what happens in this one. For November, it is a book with an ING word in the title for which I am going to try and read Walking on Sunshine by Giovanna Fletcher. I have read one of Giovanna's books before and really enjoyed it. And I also have a second one, Billy and Me, on my bookshelf waiting for me to get to. Walking on Sunshine is Giovanna's latest book. It came out in November 2021 and it follows Mike, who has lost his partner, Pia, who has been his best friend for 17 years. 
To kind of help him pick up the pieces, their two best friends, Zara and Vicky, come together and try to kind of make this a little bit more bearable for him. It turns out though, that Pia has left a couple of notes, not just for Mike, but actually for everybody in the group to help them re-embrace life now that she has gone and to get out there and get doing what they've always wanted to do. Finally for December, you need a book that has a number in the title and I am going for 10 Rules for Faking It by Sophie Sullivan. I got this in a kind of a blind book date from Words and Kisses, one of the UK's newest and in my opinion best contemporary romance book boxes. This follows a girl called Everly who is not having the best birthday in the world. She has just found out that her boyfriend is cheating on her with his assistant and unfortunately her rant about this accidentally goes viral on the country's airwaves. This brings a little bit of notoriety on Everly and she starts to kind of find some dates from having gone through this whole thing. So to make life a little bit easier for her, she decides to come up with a couple of rules for dating, but it turns out that someone in her office is starting to catch her eye. So all of these plus the others that I've mentioned are the books that I am gonna try and get reading for the buzzword for 2022. Let's check back at the end of 2022 and see if I've actually read any of those or if anything new has come onto the list. Will you also be taking part in the Buzzwordathon and what book are you most looking forward to reading for it? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.